Good day everyone and welcome back to my channel. And today, pag-uusapan naman natin ang biotechnology. My presentation is entitled, A Health to Biotechnology in the Philippines. Let's begin. Former DA Secretary William Dar is a believer of biotechnology. According to him, it can hasten the agency's goal of achieving food security and addressing malnutrition. Biotechnology could be an instrument to halt malnutrition in the Filipino children, Dar said in a message on Monday during the opening of Biotechnology Week. DA and its affiliates agencies are taking necessary steps to spread correct information about biotechnology according to CUDIS 2012. Philippine Institute for Development Studies or PIDS called for the passage of the Modern Biotechnology Act filed by Representative Sharon Garin in 2018. PIDS researchers Sunny Domingo and RV Manihar said that regulatory processes among involved national government agencies needs to be efficient to maximize decision-making lags and attach regulatory costs. An applicable legislation should establish a central authority on modern biotechnology in the Philippines. May it be under the current stewardship of DOST or another institutional arrangement. They also said more comprehensive regulatory provisions may be required and with the rapid advancement in modern biotechnology and related fields, as well as the growing list of genetically modified commodities and their products entering both global and domestic markets, according to Louis Morin Simon in 2022. And according to my research, there have been delays in biotechnology in the country. For example, the application of BT eggplant and golden rice, which taken more than 20 years from technology development to approval of commercial propagation. Joint Department Circular 2016-01 introduced added layers to, the, to ensure environment and health protection in the system, but it also extended the timelines related to the applications. That's why there are delays and massive opportunity costs, according to The Guardian 2022. For example, is the golden rice. Golden rice is developed by the International Rice Research Institute or IRRI to help limit vitamin A deficiency in developing nations. It is named from the color of the grains and is purposed to combat the vitamin A deficiency or VAD crisis. Golden rice or GR is created through genetic engineering and reportedly safe for consumption. It is similar to conventional rice but contains more beta-carotene. According to updates from the status of biotech corn and golden rice in the Philippines 2022, there are pilot plantings in 2013 by the Department of Agriculture and Philippine Rice Research Institute or Phil Rice. Dr. Ronan G. Zagada is the leader of the Golden Rice Program of the Philippine Rice Research Institute and defined golden rice as a ordinary rice improved with beta-carotene, a source of vitamin A, and gives the grain its golden color.
Next is the issues and criticism that blocking golden rice. First, former biosafety approval was granted last July. The Agriculture Department said that golden rice was a landmark for nutrition in the country, with planting expected in some provinces during the 2021 wet cropping season. And around one in five children from the poorest communities in the Philippines suffered. testing that genetically modified crops are not dangerous. Kati Estavelo of Amihan, a national organization of farm laborers and a member of the Stop Golden Rice Coalition, pointed the fingers at multinational companies. She said that golden rice only benefit the Philippine government and will leave the farmers, and that companies only back the GMO rice development to, to benefit from their production and market. Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation has donated millions of dollars over the years to IRRI for rice research. They also donate to agrochemical giant Syngenta along with several other corporations owns a patented license to the technology needed for golden rice. Estavilo claims the entire premise of addressing vitamin A deficiency is a smokescreen thrown up by the corporate proponents who want to make money off the new product. Kati Estevelo added that you need to eat around 4 kilos of golden rice to meet daily vitamin A requirements. And why not subsidize the production and delivery of other local vegetables instead? The reason is GMO crop are a cash cow and the Philippine government is brokering this deal to those who stand to profit. She was citing a study made by Madeline Love, an Australian-based independent researcher, who claimed that 4 kilograms of golden rice and 1 carrot have about the same vitamin A content. Ordonia defend that the project fits perfectly with lifestyle in the country because rice is a staple food among Filipinos and already a good source of carbohydrates but lacks of other nutrients. It is important to note that golden rice is intended to be a complementary source of beta-carotene in the diet and that beta-carotene is converted into vitamin A in the body. Estavillo's answer that golden rice won't be a hit in the Filipino market. She witnessed handouts of free golden rice samples for the, from the government back in 2015 and said children were put off by the yellowish color. 
Next are the anti-GMO movement. Amihan is currently working with congressional lawmakers and officials in several provinces to impose a resolution in or injunction against the cultivation of golden rice. Farmer Guaves want to state to support local and organic farming methods and workers. Since the pilot testing in 2013, there has been no consistent help from the Department of Agriculture for golden rice. It is a scam designed to rid of the lands and work. We have fended for ourselves for as long as we can remember. And even with this implementation of a new strain, she said farmer groups from her region are planning a protest caravan, filling into vehicles to hold demonstration in other provinces and calling for uprooting of golden rice crops. Next is a graph. In the survey done by Global Data in 2021, they surveyed 648 respondents and asked them how would they describe their spending on rice. 56% will buy large portion or buy frequent. 24% will spend medium amount and 16% will buy high-end to premium versions of products while the 3% will buy small or less frequent and the remaining 1% will be will buy lower price products or products on promotion. This concludes that a lot of people will buy large portion rather than buying high-end products. This can largely affect the golden rice market if it is not priced well. Next is the approval of golden rice. There is regulation by the Philippine government where golden rice is approved following the regulatory procedures as detailed in Joint Department Circular Number 1 Series of 2016. A timeline prepared by Ryan Bedford under United States Department of Agriculture, Foreign Agricultural Services. First is the Department of Agriculture Bureau of Plant Industry or DADPI released the biosafety permit for field trials on May 20, 2019, with field trials completed by the October 2019 in field rice stations in Munoz, Nueva Ecija, and San Mateo, Isabela. Next is DA BPI issued a permit for golden rice direct use as food and feed or for processing on December 18, 2019. And last, BPI issued a permit for golden rice commercial propagation in the Philippines used as food and feed or for the processing on July 22, 2021. Philippines is the first in the world to approve golden rice for propagation. In conclusion, golden rice and biotechnology in general has a long way to prove for our traditional farmers and more information is needed for biotechnology to be accepted by the Filipino people. And that is the end of my presentation and I hope you learned something and I hope biotechnology will flourish in coming years. Thank you so much.